the Industrial Revolution. These are essential questions of like what caused the Industrial Revolution? Why did it begin in England? There's a couple things that causes it and we're going to look at England as a case study of why, uh, how a revolution causes. First, you have to have innovations and inventions. Um, these led to increased production in agriculture and uh, transportation, the ability to move goods around quickly. Um, resources, you got to have coal, wool, you got to have coal, water, other kind of raw materials. And in England, they had a vast colonies that supplied a lot of these raw materials. You also have to have uh, infrastructure. Um, in England, it was transportation, built bridges, railroads, canals. These were already all being built, and therefore it helped increase the speed of the Industrial Revolution. And finally, in England, you also had a liberal, stable government. You need political freedom. You need property rights. If you don't have those things, Industrial Revolution cannot happen. Uh, second, what were the effects of industrialization? Uh, first, the enclosure movement brought about, um, was brought about by the agricultural revolution. And there's pros and cons of that. Uh, the pros is you have increased production of food, the more population can be, um, uh, a larger population can be uh, supported. But also there are some negatives as well, such as people lost the ability to farm, they had to move into cities and things like that. So they had a shift of what people could do for jobs. Second thing is urbanization uh, caused, a caused by a population boot and jobs in factories. Uh, again, positives and negatives here. Uh, urbanization, pe uh, unfortunately, people lived in crowded um, areas. There was disease problems, sewer problems, and fire issues. Um, but also, uh, some maybe positives, there was jobs. Um, they had a place to work and feed their family and things like that. Also, urbanization uh, led to more innovations and inventions like electricity. Also, uh, the factory system replaced the domestic uh, production. Uh, this was, would, would say we you know, have some positive, uh, more, a better economy, more trade, um, more production, faster production, cheaper, cheaper for consumers, but negatives being uh, child labor, um, bad working conditions, dangerous working conditions, low pay, um, and others like that. And finally, labor unions are formed in response to poor working conditions and low wages. Uh, one of the positives of this is you actually have people band together and putting some limits and starting to reform the capitalist system, um, but it also came out of the revolution. So you would say the Communist Manifesto came out of this kind of idea that labor unions would join together and workers would unite. What is the Communist Manifesto? I'm going to go through this um, and uh, kind of an overview of what communism is based on the Communist Manifesto. So first, they saw that history was a class struggle. Uh, second, that the modern bourgeoisie society that was created out of industrialization just created new classes. Um, and uh, that the system is really a system of exploitation of the bourgeoisie, the, the rich, versus the proletarian, and those the working poor. Um, and uh, Marx and Engels saw the proletariat work as just a part of a machine. So um, industrialization, you had a lot of machines and things like that, and the workers were just a part of that. They were expendable, they were replaceable, and there was not much required of them. They just did the same thing over and over again. Um, next, uh, they thought that this, these bad working conditions would create, uh, would mean that workers would start to join uh, and combine together into trade unions to try to battle against and get better, uh, better hours, better pay, all these things. And eventually, uh, this would become a political party. And finally, they would have a small section of the board who would join this political party of workers to lead them in the revolution. Um, in this sense, basically, the Communist Party would be working towards one thing, and that is the abolition, abolition of private property. Marx saw that the private property caused all the problems. You got rid of those, that problem, and um, you got rid of uh, classes in that way. Private property, he said, has already been done away with for most people. Only a small minority have property and own property, and therefore getting rid of it isn't really changing much. It's just getting rid of it for the very few top rich, and therefore they become all equal. Um, so once the political party gained power, they would create a command economy. It means government um, 
owns everything, housing, land, industries, um, and this becomes socialism. There's no inheritance, no private business. Uh, prices are set by the government. There's free schooling and no child labor. Um, and so in place of this or bourgeoisie society, um, they would have an association, and it would be a free development of each in the condition of the free development of all, meaning that there's not some people more important than other people. And finally, uh, Marx saw that this ruling class would tremble at the communist revolution um, and that proletarians would unite of all working countries. So he saw it across countries. It wasn't just within countries. It was all workers of all countries were going to unite and uh, change the world and we have a communist revolution together.